Keller, both your guys who came out here today talked a lot about defense and about how even the young guys have seemed to have really bought into it maybe earlier than usual. Do you sense that? Well, it's not, it's not up? earlier. What you had is the teams that I've had that have had a bunch of veterans come back and understand drag other people along. When you don't have that, it's the coaches dragging that along, and that becomes a longer process. It also will take away from your offense, because you're playing so hard, that you'll back up, and it takes more time. Um, but, you know, I, I would say having Nate talk and, and, and – our, our guard play defensively is so good. And I said that from day one. When you, when you can guard the ball and you have some shot blockers behind, you got a chance to be good. When you watch what Khalil did, particularly in the Michigan State game, just it's unbelievable. what did you think of him? Well, I mean, people that watched him, that watched him in high school couldn't believe it was the same guy. So it, it becomes if you demand a lot, you get a lot. If you accept mediocrity, you get it every time. We're very demanding, and they're demanding of each other. And all of a sudden, you're seeing this guy that, you know, defensively. And again, the great thing for him is when you guard that way, even if the offense isn't going, you can leave that guy on the court because he's not – may not score a basket. He may turn it over every once in a while. But he, if he guards and rebounds, when he's doing both, he becomes, you know, one of the best. He told us that he hadn't given any. That's very true. <laughs> what, what's that say about his? He's really, but how about this? How about not being delusional? Like self evaluating at his age? Wow. They don't. And the people around him are telling him they're the best and you're this and it's everybody else and enabling and blood. It's not happening there. Um, when I talk to him, about what I'm looking for, and he and I have a conversation. I walk out of the room and I go, wow, really smart kid, really smart. Seeing the way that Nick played on Friday, how would you measure his maturity from his freshman year to you know, last Friday? Um, he's getting better. I mean, I, I st still want more. I mean, you know, somebody said, well, you know, if he plays that way, well, he could have played better. There were more baskets, there were more rebounds, couple more uh, defensive things that he kind of backed up on. But, you know, what it is is he's showing confidence based on competence and conditioning. He's showing confidence. And, and you can't do it for him. You wish you could. You know, you wish you could build up everybody in the world and make, every, make the world feel good. Well, just doesn't work that way. I mean, and so – Proud of him, though. Really proud of him. I doubt it. It's day to day, but I would say doubtful. I'm doubtful. I mean, he hadn't practiced yet. Is there a plus to that, John, in the sense of other guys giving? You know, well, you know one guy's misery is another guy's opportunity, but you know, it's still we're not as good a team without him. Obviously, he's one of our better players. And um, but you want them healthy. You don't want guys. You know their body is their castle, and that's you know they're gonna. You try to tell them at, a, at an early stage that you have to listen to your body, and if it tells you to stop, it's you stop. And so in this case, the doctors and everybody else, and you know it's day to day, and they're making sure and keeping an eye on it. And how do you how do you think this particular team will handle being Um, what I've seen after last game, the start of last game and how we played, um, if you guard and you can test shots and you'll rebound, you'll have a chance to win every game. The issues that we're coming back to is, okay, how do we play offensively and how do we keep all these guys engaged when you're playing random? In other words, they're, it's not like just rolling a ball out and playing, but it means that you're running an action that ends up in something, that ends up in a drive, a play, a kickback, a post, that the rest of that is random. And if a guy can't engage himself in that, 
then you may have to run stuff for him to get him, at, you know, engaged in the game, especially offensively. But that's it's just going to take time. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not uh, at all surprised by it, you know. John, you recruited James Wiseman pretty hard. Any thoughts on what's going on with him and Kenny and that situation? I don't really have an idea of any of the insides of it, but uh, hope the kid can play because he's a great kid. You know, he, he really is. So I hope they work through it. Last year, player empowerment was such a big theme for you as far as getting your team to be Say more. Say what? Player empowerment. Yeah. You were very focused on getting last year's team to be more empowered. Where's this year's team? Way, way far ahead. But again, we have veterans. So now I have a point guard and and, and Emmanuel quickly. And I and I told the veterans, even EJ and Nick, I said, am I coaching you a little different? Because they know what I expect. And if they want me to get after them, they know the action that I would stop. I'm pretty consistent. <laughs> That ain't happening. And they know to stay away from that stuff. Young kids don't. So you're coaching the older guys. They have an idea of what you're looking for and what you want. And the younger guys, like right now, the two that I'm on the hardest are, uh, I would say, both Tyrese and Khalil. I'm on them harder than anybody. But you have older veteran players that understand. And you have Nate. Tom, why, why? So that's where the game is going. If you if you're watching the game, I said before, you know, driving the ball, dribble drive, which is a random form of playing. And I talked probably five or six years ago about positionless. There's not going to be point guards and big guys. There's just going to be basketball players. You better know how to play the game. And now, what they've done is it's positionless and it's random. So they may run an action where people move, the ball moves, and then it becomes spacing. And here we go. And then it's random from that point. And that's where I see the game going. And But even that being the case, these guys aren't quite ready for all the randomness of the game. It's got to be a little more structured for these guys. And so um, I don't know. Um, look, if we, we play a pressing team, if you know that I'll tell my team, if they press, we're trying to score 100. That's what I've always – they press, you're not – get it in and go, and we're trying to score. So the game was pretty random against Eastern Kentucky. But they pressed 40 minutes. They pressed, they pressed after missed free throws. They pressed, which meant they spread the floor, which meant we meant had a few more turnovers than we wanted. But the game was fast. So four of the guys came in and said, Coach, we'd really – We'd like to play that way. <laughs> and I said, all right, I got to make a call. I'm going to call Eastern Kentucky, see if we can play them 30 times. Because <laughs> unless the defense plays that way, what if they play pack line defense? What if they play a zone? What if it's, you know, and, and that's why we play all kind of different teams. We want to feel a zone. We want to feel a, a press. We want to feel a pack line. We want to feel a team that's trying to shoot you know, a ball at 25 seconds on the shot clock, how do we play? It's important for these guys to feel all that. How much do, you, do they have to sort of earn your trust to be able to let them go to play? Because that means you got every guy on the floor has got to have sort of have your, your trust that when, he, when it's his Well, time, I, I'm going to give you a random play that Emmanuel could have never made um, in the last game. The ball swung to him. He was at the top. He Before he caught it, he saw the lane. And he took it to his right hand and shot the runner and got fouled. I mean, there was no catch and square up and foot fake. He just caught it and went. Couldn't have done that a year ago. He would have caught the ball and squared up, and they would have jumped him. And so seeing that kind of stuff makes me feel good. Um, and but like I said, I I like all these. I mean, we got great kids. I mean, they're they're in a great frame of mind. They want to guard. Um, they're counting on us to figure out offensively how we play, um, you know, so we will see. A couple more guys. How did Brad do yesterday? He did good. And, and you know, he played like 14, 15 minutes. Um, he, uh, 
took a charge, lunge, lunge, took a charge on a guy. He smashed their big guy in the back to make sure we could get a rebound. He, uh, he tipped the ball free. He ran hard. He looked good. He missed some shots. And I told him, I said, you know, there are some guys in, if they defend, they stay in. There are other guys that if they make shots, they'll stay in longer. And you just didn't make any, you missed a couple. And and said, if you made one or two, you probably would have played more. But that's, you just, not to be pressured, just understand that's the situation you're in. And, um, but they were down 14 with two minutes to go. And, um, but it was, uh, you know. I was screaming, but I was so high. I was in the second level in a box that no one really knew I was even there. Except I, I screamed at the officials a little bit. The one guy I saw him look up like, I've heard that voice. Any former cats in the league that have caught your attention so far? Well, a bunch of them. But you know, you know who I'm really proud of? Um, Devin Booker. Now, we can all talk stats, like his numbers are ridiculous. 50-some percent, 50 from the three, 90 from the two. But how about Phoenix is six and three? Now, that makes me feel good, that he gets what he's doing is about winning. And, um, you know, couldn't be more proud of him. And, you know, I, I shouldn't start down that road because there's 30 of them that are, you know, P, how about PJ? Come on. I mean, this guy just had 16 last night again. I mean, he's just, you know, it's, it, it shows that everybody's on a different path. You know, get yourself prepared mentally and physically. And if it's after one, two, or three years, it's like Nick right now. Nick wasn't ready to leave after year one. He certainly wasn't ready to leave next, last year because he walked in and told me, I don't even want to look. I know I'm not ready. Now you look at him now and you're saying, wow. They're all on different paths and what they want to do, but um, no, there's a bunch of the guys. I mean, Anthony, you know, what he's doing. In my opinion, he's the best player in the league, and I know that a couple of my other guys would be mad I said not them. <laughs> but I would tell you that he is, he is a generational kind of player. He just is. And it's, he's, he's, he's got the heart of a lion. He wants to win, which really means something to him. It's not just playing. To him, I know him. It is he wants to win, um, and it appears as he and LeBron. LeBron's understanding who he is, and he's going to let him be who he is. And LeBron's being who he is, and so that could be uh, that could be scary too. How about Shea? I mean, don't get me started, but come on. I mean, here's a kid. I mean, he didn't start his first ten games here, and he did just what Tyrese just said to me. I said, you know. Feeling comfortable, but you're fine, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he said, Coach, I trust you. It's exactly what Shea said to me. I trust you. You got, I know. And, and he, you know, here he is. You're looking at him like, woof, you know. But. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks.